Hello and welcome to another episode of the iPad Lettering Show. My name is Karen, I am from iPad Lettering, bringing you the best tips and tricks about anything iPad related. Today's episode is all about Procreate 5 and all the amazing new features. For those of you who don't know me, I've been making Procreate brushes for about four years now and this version of Procreate has a brand new brush maker studio which is of course the feature I am most excited about. But apart from that, it also has a whole new range of animation features. There's now a clone tool, there is color harmony, and there's the ability to create C and YK canvases. Let's jump right in and let me show you these new features. And here we have Procreate 5 in all its glory. When we look at our gallery at first glance, this doesn't look any different. We still have our canvases and the canvas stacks and the canvas stacks are still only one level deep, which is a little bit unfortunate, but my guess is that the Procreate team had so many feature requests and so many things to prioritize that this is one of those features that unfortunately hasn't made it into Procreate 5. But I really believe they have more than made up for this by adding so many other amazing features. The first one I would like to show you is that CMYK canvases or I should say maybe the added color profile. So when we click here to create new canvas, you'll see that there's a new icon here to create a canvas. So tap on this, and then we'll see this whole new dialog box, which allows us to create a canvas. And there's some new tabs here on the side. First one, this is something that you will be familiar with. This is where you set the dimensions of your canvas. Again, you have the option to choose the measurements. Let's say, uh, 3000 pixels by 4000 pixels and then on the second tab here there's now a whole new range of color profiles in rgb there's not just display p3 and is rgb there's actually some different variations of those profiles as well which will be super helpful for different screens but then on the right hand side here we also got cmyk profiles and again, not just one profile, but we have a whole range of different profiles there. So this is really useful when you need to print something and your printer will give you the profile that they use for their workflow. Then here, let's go to time lapse setting. And this is how you can decide how you want your time lapses recorded. Mine's set to 4K and lossless, and this will give me a very, very large file. This is definitely something to take into consideration when you create your canvas, but you can also tune time lapse off once you're inside the canvas. And then here is the canvas property. So this now allows us to set default background colors. Let's say you always use black canvases, you could choose black here if you wanted to. You could also have the background hidden by default. All right, so now let's create this canvas. So now let's have a look at the canvas properties. So we'll see here, this is the same information that we had before. We'll see about this artwork. This is new here as well. Now what you can do now is add your logo and your name and your signature. Super useful if you wanna pass on a Procreate file to someone and you wanna make sure that they're not stealing it. So this is super handy to do here. Then we have the dimensions. We can't change anything here. This is more for informational purposes. You can see how many layers you've used, how many you have available. And then again here, you can see the color profile. Also the video settings and then some stats. This is very useful if you're working with a client that you're charging by the hour. You can see how much time you've actually worked on a canvas. Super useful. All right, so now we tap done. And the first thing you'll notice when you create a CMYK canvas is that the color wheel here, the colors are very muted. So this, when I first saw this, I was a little bit disappointed, but then of course this makes sense because these are the colors that will actually get printed. So this is a super useful feature to have a very accurate preview of the final printed uh, piece. So this is definitely super useful. Now my top number one feature of course is the new brush studio so let's have a look what this looks like at the first glance again the brush library looks exactly the same but now let's tap on one of the brushes and see what this looks like so this is now a whole screen dialog box and it has so many new options it's absolutely insane what you can do with these brushes now one major new feature as well is the drawing pad here this makes it super, super easy to preview your brushes. When you tap on drawing pad, you can see you can clear drawing pad, reset the brush settings, preview size, and then you can also change the color. 
So if you wanted to have a look at what it looks like in a different color, you can do that here as well. So this is super useful, probably one of my most favorite features because it means I can work on brushes. I don't have to close the dialog box before I can try the brush. Now, some of these settings here are similar to the way they were before. So taper, very similar to the way it was before. The dialog box has been redesigned a little bit to make it a bit more clear. Um, what's pressure taper and touch taper. Pressure taper is used for uh, for the pencil and then touch taper is what's getting used for when you use your fingers to draw. Then we have shape and grain. They are now two separate tabs. They used to be combined into one. They also have a lot more options now how you can design and set up your shape. Then we have the grain dialog box here. Again, there's a lot of new options that have been added here. Also the ability to set the grain as texturized or moving. This is brand new. This wasn't possible in Procreate 4. Then also the rendering tab. This has been completely revamped. We now have new rendering modes. We have new blending options. We have the ability to set weed edges and burn edges on the brushes. This is super, super cool. Definitely worth playing with. Also play with the different rendering modes. They create some really, really nice different effects. And there's just so many combinations. There's really too many to show you as part of this video. Then the next tab is wet mix. This is the same that we had before for the wet mix brushes. This works exactly the same. The only thing that's new here is that we have got this wetness jitter, which allows you to randomly change the wetness of the brush. Really nice feature. Try it out. And then we have color dynamics which is my number one top Procreate 5 feature i love this so much this gives us the ability to change the color of our brush while we draw it's absolutely amazing we have four different options here we have got stamp color jitter we've got stroke color jitter we've got color pressure and we also have color tilt stamp color jitter is very useful when you have a brush that draws patterns such as maybe grass or leaves well, we want to have little color variations because you can decide how you want those colors to change with each stamp that gets painted on the canvas. Then we have stroke color jitter. This is quite similar, but this means that the color changes with each stroke that you draw. Let me show you how this works. So let's change the hue here a little bit and choose different color. And now let's see what happens when we draw these strokes. You can see randomly changes the color it's pretty cool one of the things that i wish would have been implemented with stroke color cheater is the ability to change the color of the strokes not randomly but in a sort of more organized manner maybe having the ability to choose a gradient with which the colors change but unfortunately that wasn't the highest priority in the list for all the new features for Procreate 5. So I completely understand that that's probably gone into the backlog and hopefully they're gonna look at this in a future version. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Let's have a look at the next option here, which is color pressure. So this means the color of your stroke changes with the change in pressure of your April pencil. So let's see what happens when we do that. You can see here already how the colors have changed a little bit. So let me show you how this works like this. And you can see this is quite beautiful. So this is how you can create your rainbow pieces and sort of create this gradient effect like this. Now, a handy little tip to erase your drawing pad here. First option, of course, is you can clear drawing pad like this, but then what you can do as well is if you can scrub on this with three fingers, similar how we do that on the normal canvas works here as well. We just scrub a little bit and then clear the canvas, which is super handy. And so now we can try this out again. Maybe you see what happens when you use different color. So this is a lot of fun to play with, definitely. All right, and then the last one is the color tilt. So this works very similar to the color pressure, but instead of the pressure, it uses the tilt of the pencil to decide how the color gets changed. So let's, let's erase this again and then the easiest way to try this out is holding your pencil like this and then sort of see what happens when you slightly move it around like this. And you can see how the color changes according to the tilt of my pencil. This is not a feature I find super useful personally because I don't ever use the tilt of the pencil to make any changes to my brush strokes. But definitely if this is something that you might 
find interesting, definitely try it out. All right, then in the next section, we have dynamics. This is the same as in Procreate 4. Next section is Apple Pencil. Again, this is almost exactly the same as Procreate 4. Then we have the properties. Again, this is very similar to Procreate 4 as well. And then last but not least, we have the ability to not only name our brush, but also give it a logo and create a name for it and sign it. This is super cool. This means now people can't just take your brushes, duplicate them, and then distribute them as their own. But if I wanted to copy this brush, let me show you what happens when I do that. So I'll copy the brush. And then let's go back to about this brush. You can see now that name has changed, but the signature is still there. So you can't just copy brushes anymore from other people, which is actually very nice. And especially for someone like myself who likes making brushes and selling them, this is a very, very useful feature. And now if this wasn't already enough new features, we have more. So let me show you. What we can do as well is create a dual brush. And the way that that works is that you can use two brushes and then combine them. So if you highlight them both, there is a combine button here. So you click on that and that combines the two brushes into one. So now when we look at this, you can see here that we have two brushes and we can change them individually from each other. And as you can imagine, this can create thousands of even better and newer combinations of brushes. It's unbelievable what you can do with this feature. Tapping on one of these brushes brings up another little submenu, which lets you choose that combined mode of these brushes so you can decide how they should be combined. And again, this is quite handy because you can see what happens as you scroll along on the side here with your brush preview. And then changing the brushes here works exactly the same as changing a single brush. You can see you've got all the same settings here for your primary brush. And then for the secondary brush, there are a few less options. For example, color dynamics is not available here and also wheat mix is not available most likely because that would give some unwanted side effects and also to just keep the complexity down a little bit. Definitely try this out. This is so much fun to play with. And then last but not least, we now also have the ability to import Photoshop brushes into Procreate. And this gives us even more option. This is unbelievable. So we tap on the plus sign here and then tap import, and then you can import a Photoshop brush file, which is an ABR extension and it'll import it into Procreate just like that. So now you'll see that this has been added as a new brush set at the top of your stack. And now we have all these Photoshop brushes in Procreate as well. This is absolutely amazing. All right, and there you have it. These are all the new features of the brand new Procreate 5 Brush Studio. Of course, there are so many more details I could be talking about, but I don't want to make this video five hours long. So this is just a really quick overview because we have more features to look at. And the next feature that I would like to show you is Animation Assist. In Procreate 4, you already had the ability to create animated GIFs by using the layers as the different frames, but it was a little bit cumbersome because you had to go in here and you had to duplicate layers. So it wasn't super intuitive. Now with Procreate 5, we have the ability to turn on animation assist for our canvas. And there is a new checkbox here in the actions menu. So you turn this on and you can see now that we've got this timeline here added at the bottom of our screen. Now let me show you the, these features just with a very basic animation. So let's just create a circle and then fill it like this. And then what we can do now, instead of going to the layers menu and duplicating this layer, we can long press a frame to duplicate the layer. And then we can move it a little bit and do the same thing again and move it a little bit. And now you can see also what happened is that the previous layer have become a little bit lighter and this is the new onion skin feature. So if you have a look at the setting, you can still you can see here now that we've got onion skin frames. So you can choose how many of those previous iterations of your shape you want to show. So we can turn this down. If we don't want to see them, we can turn them off. Or maybe we want to see three or four. Another thing that you can do is set the opacity of your onion skin. 
So you can turn this up or down depending on how solid you want these to see. Sometimes it's nice to have only a hint of what your previous frames look like. So this is very nice. And then you can also color them now, which is super cool. So you can see this is your active frame and then these are your previous frames. So it's quite obvious which ones of the frames you are working with currently. And then here at the bottom, we've got the option of, of previewing your animation. So now if we play the animation, it goes really fast. So let's see, let's make it a bit slower. And then we can do loop, it just loops around. We can do ping pong, it goes up and down. Or we can just do it once and then after it's played, been played once, it'll stop. So depending on the type of animation that you create, you can choose one of these options. So very quickly, this was the animation assist feature. Again, I could probably make a whole separate video just to show you how all of this works. But in the interest of the length of this video, let's postpone it to another video. All right, then quickly, I would also like to show you the clone feature. This works pretty much the same way as in Photoshop. So let me turn off animation assist so that we can look at the clone feature. We don't need all these layers now. So let's just choose this one. So now if I wanted to copy this to another place, I could use the clone feature. Of course, most of you wouldn't use it for that purpose, but just, you know, just to demonstrate how this works. So you set the target of your clone and then you start painting and you can see how the shape gets copied like this. This is probably more useful for if you're working with grains or if you're working with pattern textures to copy certain parts of those textures. Definitely for skin retouching, removing marks on the skin, things like that. That's what the clone tool is super useful for. But then last but not least, the color selector. First thing is that you can pull this off now. So we can pull it and we can put it anywhere on the screen we want to have it. This is super useful. If you just want to paint, pick a color paint, you can also swap between your palettes. Um, you can choose the default color picker like this. So this is super handy. And then if you don't want it anymore, you can click tap and then goes back into the corner. Very cool. And so other than the this classic and the value color selectors. You also have the ability to use color harmony now. This, these are different ways of creating color schemes that match. These are the five most common selected color harmonies. Super handy, just as a starting point to create your color palettes. And there you have it. These are all the brand new Procreate 5 features. I know this video was very fast and not very detailed, but if you would like to learn more, I have just recorded a brand new course together with my friend Amanda Arneal, where we are going through all these features in much more detail. We also have projects where you can apply the skills that you've learned at the same time. For more information, have a look in the description of this video. And then also, of course, I have been busy making making new brushes as well. There is three new brush sets and I will make separate videos for each of those showing you what these brushes look like. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.